Azure API Management Caching Mechanism is a powerful feature that can significantly boost the performance and efficiency of your APIs. It allows you to store frequently accessed data in Cache and serve the responses from the Cache without reaching the backend. This reduces the load on your backend services, which in turn reduces the latency for client applications. If your backend is running on the cloud, it lowers the cost by minimizing the calls to your backend. And it also enhances the client experience with faster responses. You just apply a cache lookup policy to your operation and APIM does the magic for you. However, this applies to only cacheable HTTP web like Git operations. But from time to time, due to legacy behavior or to support large such criteria via HTTP request, the HTTP post action is often used to retrieve the data. How can we extend the default caching to the HTTP post method? In this video, we will see setting up cache mechanism for Git operation, setting up cache mechanism for post operation. We will test this to see if the cache is being hit. Hi, this is Shri. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm a Microsoft MVP and I do blogging and make YouTube videos on .NET and Azure. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and help me grow this channel. Let's get started now. I'm in my Azure portal. I have already created Infecto iPhone Dev API Management instance. I have also added a simple API, RESTful API with a Git operation and the backend URL is this REST API endpoint. This is a sample REST API endpoint which is available online. You can simply use a Git operation which would give you the list of all the objects. You can use this one for testing. So we are just using this Git operation which would give you the list of all objects. If you were to test this Git operation really quick, send we got list of all the objects. Now let's add cache policy for this HTTP get operation. To add cache, go to design and either you can add caching at all operations level or it makes sense to add caching for each individual operation because the key that you use to store cache per operation could vary. That's the most frequently used use case. Just click on add policy and inbound processing, click on add policy, cache the response, just leave everything to the default. At the moment, we are not using query parameters. If when you add the query parameters, the query parameters will be used as a cache key. For that query parameter, it caches the response. When the query parameter varies, it will create a new cache based on the provided query parameter. But for the demo purpose, we are not using any query parameter, leave everything else to the default. And this is a duration in terms of how long we want to hold this cache for. So this is for one hour, leave everything to the default and click on save. This will add a cache lookup policy to our inbound policies. If you look at the policies code, you see it has added a cache lookup policy and it has set the cache duration as 60 minutes. That's all looking good. Now, if we test this one, just hit on trace. Yeah, we got the response and you go to the trace. Cache lookup resulted in a miss. As this is the first request, the result is not stored in the cache. So it forwarded the request to the backend and, and backend has served the response. Now, if we do the trace again on the same request, if you look at this one now, it resulted, it has written the response a bit faster and if you look at the trace this time api inspector then the cache lookup cache lookup resulted in a hit meaning that it has found the response in the cache directly so it did not forward the request to the backend instead it returned the response from the cache directly which you can look at clearly from the trace here now to demonstrate caching for post operation I have created another API, Infecto API, and I have added a simple post operation here. And the backend of this post operation is an Azure function. If you see here, this is Infecto Azure function, which I created, which would take the payload, the request payload, and return the query results. 
if we test this function simply just pass in a payload as id 3 and hit send maybe we will do trace because that will give more details in terms of what has happened behind the scenes it has written the results 200 and we received the data even though it's a post operation it's actually trying to retrieve the data return the results this is useful in cases where we have a large complex search criteria that we want to pass as part of the request payload and the backend will use this search payload and it will try to return the query results it is actually returning the data getting the data but in form of the post operation but by default the caching mechanism is supported only for the get operation not for the post operation now to make the caching work for the post operation we need to apply the custom policies in previous case we have directly applied and the apim took care of everything but here we have we have to manually handle the caching through the apm policies let's do that now now if we go to our sample post operation designer in the inbound processing if you open the policies this is where we will apply the logic to make the caching work in our traditional caching logic what we do is first we will try to see if the data exists in the cache if it exists in the cache we will retrieve data from cache and we will serve it if not we will make the call to the backend we will get the data we will store it in the cache then we return back to the client we will need to do a similar logic here through the policies let's do that i have this code ready i'll simply copy paste this here and we can quickly go over this code so since in our case it's a json payload first we are trying to read the data from the request body with the preserve content true body will be a json object once we retrieve the data we are storing it in a variable called request body now the request body contains the actual request body now from the request body we are reading the id and we are storing the id value in a variable name id now with the id value as a key we are checking to see if the data exists in the cache if it exists in the cache then the result will be set to the cached response value variable right now here we will check to see if the data actually exists in this variable right exists in the cache if yes we will simply return the response without sending the call to the backend if the data doesn't exist in the cache response we will simply send the request to the backend here now when we return the response back to the backend what we have to do is we have to first store the response in a response value variable we are storing this in the response value variable then we are storing this one into the cache with the id so every time for every request when you retrieve the data you definitely need to have a unique identifier to uniquely identify the request unique identifier as your cache key to store or to retrieve the caching is per request now you store your response into the cache using the id variable once you store the response in the cache pretty much the job is done it will automatically the outbound will automatically return the response back to the client okay let's test this one with idea 6 and let's click on trace it has returned the data for id 6 now let's look at the trace if you look at the trace set the variable successfully from here id6 has been set that's all looking good then if you look at the cache lookup with the id6 there is no cache value cache resulted in a miss meaning that it would send the request to the backend the request has been forwarded to the backend and the backend has served the request and it, it has written the response this is what we have seen in the response it totally took if you look at here right um it took around maybe 32 milliseconds um it should be a bit quicker because this time it should be straight from the cache it is like less than one milliseconds right and if you look at the trace now if you see the cache lookup we are more interested on the cache lookup 
cache lookup expression was successfully evaluated and cache lookup resulted in a hit it has found the value in the cache with the id 6 which is this one it has written the response from the cache written response directly and it ends there it did not forward the request to the backend you can even set the default cache limit based on your need your requirement if you look at here we have set the default cache limit the duration to 400 seconds based on the requirement we can set the duration here i hope you like the content if you like the content please hit subscribe and share the content i'll catch you in the next video until then this is shri signing off thank you